5 a.m. Brooklyn, I'm on my way. I try to tell y'all, man, you ain't gotta make big money when you got big money best friends, boy. D Wise, King of New York. And then my office is right at the base of that tall square building. Really? Yeah, that's fresh. Beaches, sort of right on the water. So in the summertime, there's bo boats moored all out through here. It's beautiful. It's like a Morocco painting, and then the tide goes out there, all laid over on the side. I mean, these are 10 million plus. So what you're seeing right now is what is it? You said the wealthiest got was ranked or voted the wealthiest. The whole town, but this part is the wealthiest part of the town. In the country, I'm talking about the country. Yeah. Wealthiest town in the country, and that Ziegler's farm that we just passed? 165 million, it's on the market. 165 million, and that is the most expensive piece of property in the United States. I think at this point in time, yes. I want to introduce you to somebody. First of all, well, this is Morgan. Hi. And this, tell us who this is. This is Dude. That's a Dude. And what kind of turtle is Dude? Red-eared slider. Red-eared slider. How old is he? Like nine months, maybe six. Dude one's out of his shell, huh? And who did you say that creep was right there? Oh, that's Sunshine. Sunshine. Who's not Sunshine at all. She's not Sunshine at all. I see you, Sunshine. I see you. Yeah, I just wanted to get out of the house this weekend, so I took advantage of uh, taking a trip up for the weekend to New York to see a couple of friends. Sometimes it's nice getting up 30,000 feet, do some meditating. But uh, today I'm chilling out with a buddy of mine D Wise, Dan. It's pretty cool, man, keep in touch with guys that you meet, you know, years ago and, and we don't talk to each other, you know, but once every few months, maybe a couple times a year at times, but you know, uh, it's pretty neat, man, pretty cool. He's always been, you know, like a brother to me, welcomed me into his house and went to his wedding and so on and so forth. So it's pretty cool, pretty awesome, man, friends. Today's National Pizza Day. And I might step out and get a slice later, but for now, I'm starving. I always thought I wanted to have a boy first, but I don't think I mind having a girl, little girl. <laughs> I think it might be snowing outside. Maybe not snowing, but some flurries? No? False alarm? No, they're there. They're probably too small to get on camera, though. Can y'all see that? No? I see it, and it ain't rain. So this is Darien, very, very beautiful, wealthy community right outside of New York and Connecticut. Today I'm gonna head into the city and uh, check out a couple different spots in, in Manhattan and maybe get over to Brooklyn. Said it's gonna rain, but um, that ain't ever stopped me before, so let's check it out.
early check-in is clutch. Yo, I knew I should have brought my camera, my Canon. Look at this setup for a video. Oh man, look at that backdrop, this couch. That's a YouTube video waiting to happen right there, man. What a good look. Welcome to another episode. It looks like the weather's moving in and um, these are like the last 15 minutes before it rains for the next 24 hours. So I'm thinking about tracking through the city and bouncing around and checking out some spots. I want to go down and check out the YouTube studio space, this YouTube creator's spot they have in New York. So maybe I'll try to make my way down there in the rain. It's going to be some weather in these next few shots, probably for the rest of the trip. Raining. That's a good look. Just got down here to 8th Street. I'm gonna look for this YouTube spot. Brick City, baby. So YouTube's on some bougie shit. Doesn't know what Opal status is. I guess you ain't shit if you're Opal. Gotta be on bronze, which well, she didn't say. She said 10,000 subscribers. So I made the trip over here for nothing, basically. Couldn't even look around. And online it's misleading. It says there's some features and some things you can do. But that was a lie. Oh well. Now I know. Only in New York does a CVS look like the Vatican. Y'all thought I was somewhere special, didn't you? That's crazy. Look at this, bro. <laughs> Back in the room, let me tell you something about those New York City subways. Y'all can stop talking about emotional roller coasters. Just go ahead and use the New York subway as a metaphor from now on. Yeah, YouTube, suck it, man. I'm coming back when I hit bronze. Before I forget about it though, thought about something today as I was walking through the city. I'm gonna put a link to my previous YouTube video on one of my previous trips in New York. Check it out, I just did some thinking and started to get all kind of deep and philosophical, but I, I dropped some real knowledge about the power of traveling and getting out of your environment and that sort of thing. Check it out, I'll put a link to it right here. I'm gonna apologize right now for, for the chainsaw. The noise in the background was crazy, but try to stay focused. It's a short clip, but it's powerful. Head down to Times Square. See what's going down in the center of the city.
Another day, another dollar in the city. Check out Brooklyn today. You know me, I try to put things in simple terms. But the bottom line is, man, you can only live one of two ways. There's only really two ways to live. And I know that's a really huge statement when it comes to something as complicated as life. Yeah. But the bottom line is, there's only two ways to live. And that is intentionally or automatically, period. You can choose consciously, intentionally, what you're gonna do, how you're gonna live, what you're gonna pay attention to, or you cannot do shit, and you'll still have a life, you'll still live, you'll still act, you'll still eat, but your environment and life will be basically running you. I just thought about it, and I just thought, it really comes down to that, and I think people are within that spectrum. They're on that spectrum somewhere. They're, they're juggling, trying to live consciously, trying to live intentionally, while being basically a slave to their subconscious and living automatically, and not even realizing that they're living automatically. But that's the two, those are the two, that's the two, that's the two that you're juggling, bro. That's it. And I think that that simple concept is then what you can like extrapolate out what you, how you want to live your life. But that basic concept, I think is what it boils down to. And if you always go back to that, you can ask yourself, okay, what am I doing? Am I living intentionally? Or am I some sort of automatic kind of, on automatic pilot? Am I, am I some sort of slave to my external environment, to my senses? Because that's the other thing that I'm, and I, if I get into that, I'll be drilling down on this simple concept. But when I talk about living externally and living manually and, auto and automatically, what I'm talking about is basically living according to the sensations that you're experiencing. You're receiving information from your environment and reacting to it rather than receiving information, responding to it after you think about it accordingly. Like, that's the difference. It's wild that you say that because what's going on in my mind is basically the question, am I selfish for living life or navigating life in the way that I prefer? No! You're taking absolute control of your life. Thank you. That's the essence of, of actually being in control and living your life. You feel odd and awkward and rare and random because everyone else is basically living the life that's designed for them to become slaves to it, and exactly. you're bucking the trend. Exactly. Pronounce Orion, not Orion. Should be though. Hey, shout out to Sigmund. I found Freud in Brooklyn. <laughs> hey, some things never change, bro. So tell me what you're what you said again. This is a knockoff or Winwood is a knockoff of Brooklyn. Yeah, so this is where Winwood got their basically got their style, got their ideas. So mofongo is officially one of my favorite dishes. I forgot how much I enjoyed it because the first time I ever had mofongo, I was in a rainforest in Puerto Rico and everything else around it was like amazing. So kind of get lost in the shuffle. However, I remember it being good. And this one I just had was lo mejor. Lo mejor is what I told her. So a mofongo done right is one of my favorite dishes. Fact. Yo, no homo. No, I cleared him. I cleared him. We good. We good. So I'm back home at the bottom. That's the end of my vlog. 48 hours in New York. Let me know what you guys thought about the vlog in the comments below. Let me know if you want to see more vlogs on my channel. Shout out to Dan. Shout out to Dominican Rob. Appreciate the hospitality. See y'all soon. And I'll see the rest of y'all soon in my next episode.